we are asked to evaluate the integral of the following expression. And this type of expression is often encountered on homeworks, quizzes, and tests, where you have e raised to a constant times the variable, and then multiplied by either the sine or the cosine of a constant times the same variable. It's a pretty common scenario. They're quite challenging questions, frankly. And the way in which to evaluate them is through integration by parts. We have set up an integration by parts template right here. And the first thing we need to do is to let u equal one of the two functions. We have two functions that we can select from. Typically in integration by parts, you would let u equal the function whose derivative becomes simpler. Now, the derivative of e to the 7 theta is e to the 7 theta times 7. And the derivative of sine of 8 theta is the cosine of 8 theta times 8. In neither case, does the derivative become a simpler function? Each derivative is as complicated as its parent function. So it isn't really obvious, frankly, what to let u equal to in this case. So this might be one of those problems where you just have to sort of be shown what to let u equal. But just keep in mind in other problems, you would let u equal the function whose derivative becomes a simpler function. In this particular case, we will let u equal the sine of 8 theta. And we will see towards the end of the problem that this is a successful choice. Now, to go from u to du would require us to compute the derivative. As noted, the derivative of sine of 8 theta is 8 cosine of 8 theta. The dv will equal the rest of the expression. We've underlined the rest of the expression, and we can see that it is equal to e to the 7 theta d theta. Now remember, when going from dv to v, you don't take the derivative, you integrate. And to integrate e to a constant variable, it's worth reviewing a little bit of a shortcut. So whenever you have e to the k theta or to the kx, and you want to integrate that, it simply becomes 1 over k e to the k theta. And k would be whatever constant is present in the equation or the expression. In this case, it's 7. So if we follow that little template here, we're going to end up with 1 over 7 e to the 7 theta when we integrate. That's a formula right here that's easy to prove using u sub, but we will omit that for the time being. So now that you have all four entries of the template filled in, you're going to want to turn over to your integration by parts formula. And we'll just follow it along. We have the integral of our u, which we said was the sine of 8 theta multiplied by dv, which was e to the 7 theta d theta. Notice, by the way, that this expression right here is the same as the original problem. In our case, it's just sort of switched around, but it is equivalent to the original integral. The good stuff is over here. We're going to let this equal u times v. So we'll take our u, and if you look at the template, again, that was sine of 8 theta, multiplied by v, and the v was the 1 7th e to the 7 theta. I prefer to put that in the front, actually. So we'll have 1 7th e to the 7 theta right here. Then we will have a minus sign of an additional integral where it is v again. So you have your 1 7th e to the 7 theta and then times your du. And we figured out du was 8 cosine of 8 theta. So far, so good. If we look carefully, we can simplify this a tad. We have 1 7th multiplied by 8, which of course is 8 sevenths, which we can actually factor out to the front of the integral. So let's go ahead and factor out that 8 sevenths. One minor detail we omitted when we did the derivative back in our chart, we said the derivative was 8 cosine of 8 theta. We forgot to put a d theta right there. So we just have to include a d theta here won't affect anything else we've done. But here's the real problem is we are left with this integral, which is as complicated as the original problem. So we're going to actually have to go ahead and use integration by parts again on this particular expression because there's really no other easy way of integrating it. So we're going to take an aside and hopefully this keeps us organized. And our aside is once again to do integration by parts on this expression highlighted in green. Now, as before, we're going to let u equal the trigonometric function. So that's going to be the cosine of 8 theta. And then the dv 
will equal the rest of the expression, so the e to the 7 theta d theta. It's very much like what we did already. The derivative of cosine of 8 theta is negative 8 sine of 8 theta. And then the integral following that rule we listed earlier is 1 7th e to the 7 theta. Now remember the main formula for parts is right up here. This is what we need. So we're going to take the u, which was cosine of 8 theta, multiply that by v, which was the 1 7th e to the 7 theta, minus the integral of v yet again, 1 7th e to the 7 theta, times our du, which was the negative 8 sine of 8 theta theta, d theta. Oh goodness, we forgot the d theta again, pardon me. Okay, so we look here carefully. We've got a 1 7th and a negative 8. So we're going to factor out a negative 8 7ths. There's already a negative sign right there. So when you write this out, you're actually going to be left with a positive 8 7ths. And then you'll have the integral of e to the 7 theta sine of 8 theta d theta. And then you have this little guy right here is still part of this expression. Now this is not our final answer. Let's recall that this expression was the integral that we needed to evaluate back over here. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to copy all of this information. There's a lot of writing involved in this type of problem. Let's bring it down here. There it is. And again, the integral in the green box needs to be replaced with this entire expression in the bracket. So let's go ahead and put that in. Now the next thing we're going to want to do after inserting that integral into the brackets where the green integral was located is distribute this negative 8 sevenths. So we're going to fill it in or distribute it to there and all the way out to there. When you multiply these two together, you're going to get a minus 8 49ths. And then when you multiply the other two together, you'll get a minus 64 49ths. Let's write that out. All right, so here is this gargantuan expression. And if you look again, you're going to be left with an integral that seems like we'd have to use integration by parts a third time. And it seems like it's an infinitely regressing problem, which it would be if we kept going. But notice that this integral in blue is exactly the same as this integral right here. Yes, the order is switched. We have sine of 8 theta written second over here, and it's written first over there, but that doesn't matter. These are the same. So they're basically like terms, and what we're going to do is combine those like terms. So watch carefully as we combine them. We're going to add the 64 49ths integral e to the 7 theta sine of 8 theta d theta and we're going to do this on both sides of the expression. So just to save us a little effort, we'll just kind of add it over there. Now over here, there's a one in front of that integral. So you're basically, because they're like terms, you're going to add one plus the 64 40 ninths. And when you do that, you're going to get 113 40 ninths. So now you have 113 40 ninths times the integral. And gee, which way should we write it? We'll just write it in the e to the 7 theta sine of 8 theta fashion. I believe that was the original way in which it was written. And that's equal to the other side. Now remember, this all cancel out. So the other side is this expression right here. So we'll just copy and paste that down below. We are one step away from solving for the answer because we're trying to evaluate this integral. Well, if you watch carefully and multiply both sides by 49 over 113, we'll have to do this to the entire right-hand side. Those would cancel out. You'd be left with the integral you were trying to evaluate over here on the right-hand side. You just have to make sure you distribute the 49 113ths here as well as to over there. So when we multiply the 49 over 113 by the 1 7th, we would get 7 over 113 e to the 7 theta sine of 8 theta 
minus, now when you multiply the 8 over 49 times the 49 over 113, the simplest thing to realize is the 49s cancel. So you're left with 8 over 113e to the 7 theta cosine of 8 theta. And then just include your constant of integration. And you are now done with the problem. That is the integral of e to the 7 theta sine of 8 theta d theta.